Wow, damn, I'm really looking swole. Am I still the same lifter as I was, you know, a few weeks ago when I was natural? Man, all this trend is really just blowing me up. Hey, no, stop, stop filming. Hey, get the, you son of a. So today we're talking about triceps, this little guy. So we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of stuff to get you some bigger, juicy triceps. We're gonna be talking about anatomy of the triceps themselves, exercise selection, volume that you should be targeting, injury prevention, rep range, programming, strength standards, as well as some measurements to give you some goals. Now, as the name suggests, the triceps are actually composed of three separate heads, which sounds like quite the night out. The long head, the lateral head, and the medial head. Now, the lateral head is this horseshoe bro up here. The long head is the sweepy boy down here. And then the medial is sort of this small chunk that you can kind of see here, but mostly is kind of hard to see. Now, you might have seen graphics like this, where it's like, do this exercise for this part of the triceps, do this one for this, and this one for this, but this is mostly bullshit. There might be some minor differences in activation, but for the most part, just extending the elbow is going to work all of these chunks together. They all extend the elbow. This is Instagram, right? It's 90% bullshit. But it's entertaining. Now, the one exception I would say is the long head. It actually crosses the shoulder joint and it's responsible for shoulder extension. And so doing overhead work puts the long head in a sort of pre-stretched position. And this is why you'll never feel a long head stretch unless you're doing overhead work. So I do recommend having some kind of cable extension or dumbbell extension or a, a French press in order to target that area, maybe a little bit more effectively. We do know that a stretch can independently help muscle growth and that exercises that put the muscle in a loaded stretch position can absolutely help growth. So I would say for the long head in particular, you'll want some kind of overhead work. For the medial and lateral, I don't think it's really worth, you know, twisting your own dick to try to find that contracted position for each particular head. Now let's get into exercise selection. Now the triceps will absolutely be stimulated by presses and pushes. So vertical presses and horizontal presses or pushes, as I call it in my book. Now, it depends on your grip width for the most part. So taking a very wide grip, you can see there's not a whole bunch of range of motion, okay? And you're not even getting a stretch on the triceps. The stretch is going to be at the shoulder, on the pecs, and on the front delt. It's not going to be a whole bunch of triceps. But if you bring your grip in, suddenly it's much more range of motion at the triceps, at the elbow, and you're potentially getting a bit of a stretch on the triceps as well. So the close grip bench press is a very good way to target the triceps. Dips are also going to be an excellent stimulator of triceps hypertrophy. Some people don't like them, and I agree that they're not for everyone, okay? Some people get sternum issues or clavicle issues or rotator cuff issues, but try them out and give them an honest shot and see if they work for you. Some calisthenics athletes develop ridiculous triceps, mostly just from dips and, you know, close grip push-up variations. So it can work. It's worth noting, however, that some people tend to be more torso dominant and other people tend to be more arm dominant. So if you have a huge chest, you might not recruit a lot of triceps in the bench press because it's just going to be a lot of chest. It might be a lot of front delts. If you're pressing, it might not be a lot of triceps. For other people, they actually struggle to recruit the chest. They find that their arms take most of the tension. So know which type you are. If compound movements don't stimulate the triceps and don't recruit the triceps for you, they might not be a very good thing to include for arm growth. Next, moving on to the isolation movements, you can do skull crushers. You can do this with an easy bar, maybe with a straight bar, but I would say use an easy bar if you have access to one. You can do it with the neutral grip bar. You can do this with dumbbells, lots of different ways to do these. You can also do them in a few different ways. Some people lower to the skull, to the face, um, but a lot of people find that this bothers the elbows. Something about the elbows going forward just really does irritate the elbows of a lot of people. Other people tend to lower behind the head and use a little bit of lat, a little bit of shoulder extension, which is also triceps, by the way, extending that shoulder in order to get the bar moving. This is the way that I prefer to do them, and I find that they are very, very effective. Other people keep it back here and extend the arm this way. So they keep 
in this elevated position behind them and they just focus on this type of action. I know natural hypertrophy does them in this way and give them a shot. See which way you prefer. I've done them a bunch of different ways and I've settled on this way because I found that it's the most effective for me. But you have to find the most effective way for you. I'm just some guy on the internet sharing my experience. Now, if those piss off your elbows, which does happen to quite a few people, you can do overhead cable extensions or overhead band extensions. Both are okay. You can do them in two different ways. One is when you set up and you're standing vertically. So you set the attachment sort of in the mid range to where you can get full range of motion and you just start them this way. I've been doing them this way recently and it's a very good way because it forces you to stay strict and make sure that your range of motion is fairly consistent. You can use full range of motion for the first one and then just lower to around here for subsequent reps, or you can do them from a dead stop each single rep. Both are okay. You can also do them where you take the rope and you sort of twist around and then you do them when you're leaning away from the attachment. This allows for a little bit more of a natural feeling movement and you can almost always use more weight. So you might take, you know, your five rep max from the strict version and do it for 12, 15 reps, or maybe even more. So this can be a good way to overload and you can switch back and forth and see which one you prefer, prefer or just use both for the sake of variety. Now, in terms of elbows flared or tucked, I would say go by feel. I keep them fairly flared because that is what is most comfortable for me, allows me to use the most weight and just feels anatomically correct. If I go like this, I feel like very constricted. And so flaring just feels better. So if someone gives you unsolicited advice, especially on the internet about your technique, when it feels good and is working for you, tell them to fuck off. Next, pushdowns. This is a tried and true exercise, absolutely a classic, a staple in many programs because it works. So you can do these with a rope, you can do them with a bar overhand, you can do them with like any any kind of bar where you're, you're you know, internally or externally rotated. You can do these with an underhand grip, which I am not a huge fan of because grip is often the limiting factor. Basically, just do whatever is comfortable on your wrists, your elbows, and your shoulders. That is going to be way more important than trying to activate a certain area. You can also do overhead dumbbell extensions. Make sure you use full range of motion. I would pause at the bottom as well, just because these tend to be a little bit harder on the elbows. And these are a good option as well. I tend to stick to cables just because they feel a little bit smoother and they take half the time because you can do both arms at the same time. There are also prone extensions with dumbbells. So you're lying on a bench and you have two dumbbells and you're sort of extending them like this, almost in like a, a punching movement. So you keep your elbows high and forward so you can get a stretch on the elbow, on the triceps, uh, and then you're just extending like this. Some people find that this bothers the shoulders. There's a few different ways to do them. You can do them, you know, where you're like this, where you're like this, where you're like this, just like whatever way is most comfortable and satisfying for you is okay. Next up, we have a JM press. So this is sort of like a, a mix between a close grip bench press and a skull crusher. So you're not going back, you're not going to the chest, you're going like to the chin area, you're taking it right, right on the full facial. And you know, this is like, I'll be honest, I don't like this movement very much. I've done it a few times, you know, I've implemented it over the years a few times and it never quite feels right for me, but enough people like it and some people rave about it. And so it must be good for some people. So I think it's worth trying. Also do a French press where you have one dumbbell to save time. I guess that's okay. I never really liked this either, just because if you fail, you're, you're, you're kind of fucked. <laughs> um, if you fail with one dumbbell, like it, you can just put it on your shoulder and then like take it down. But if you fail with both arms, it's a lot heavier weight. It's going to be almost twice as much weight, maybe even more. And, you know, not a huge fan, but it can work. By the way, bodybuilding.com has a board press listed as one of their best triceps exercises. Probably not great just from a risk to reward stimulus to fatigue ratio, just because it's a lot of stress on the elbows. You're going to be overloading with a ton of weight and you're not going to be getting as much range of motion anyway. Probably not the best movement. Plus, don't do it the way this chick is doing it. 
if you're balancing the board on your chest and just relying on your tits to keep it in place, maybe not a good idea. It's also worth noting that standing cable pullovers and just normal dumbbell pullovers are absolutely going to be working the triceps, especially if you are fairly triceps dominant. You might feel your triceps working just as much as your lats. So for some people, they might not feel triceps much at all. Other people, they might feel a lot. Find out which type you are. All right, next, let's get into injury prevention. Triceps muscle tears are fairly uncommon compared to biceps muscle tears, pec tears, hamstring tears. They're just not really exposed to the type of position, that extremely lengthened position that causes muscle tears. I'm not saying those other muscle groups are like going to pop off at any moment, but triceps tears are relatively less common. Usually the limiting factor is not going to be your wrists, it's not going to be your shoulders, it's not going to be the muscle itself, it's going to be your elbows. So listen to your elbows, you know, if they're starting to ache, you know, take a deload or take a week of lighter, you know, active recovery, that kind of thing, because keeping your elbows in one piece is one of the secrets to getting big triceps. In terms of rep range, I like to have close grip bench press in the 5 to 8 rep range. You can go a little bit lower, I'll do doubles, I'll do singles sometimes, I'll do three to four to five reps. I'll go higher as well sometimes, but usually that's what I use for my heavier work. Dips, I don't personally like them for super low reps. Some people do, but I generally say keep it six and up if you can. In terms of most isolation movements, I spend the majority of my time in the sort of eight to 12 rep range with a little bit of time slightly below and a little bit of time in the sort of 10 to 15-ish range, but the majority is roughly 10 reps per set. I have maxed out on extensions before, but I would say this is not really recommended and is mostly just due to stupidity. Now, in terms of overall volume for extending movements, isolations, I have zero to four reps or zero to four sets for beginners, two to eight for intermediates and six to 12 for those who are advanced. I do think having some isolation movements is going to be necessary to maximize development as you become intermediate and more advanced. Don't go overboard, but you probably do need some kind of isolation to maximize development. You can get a lot with compounds, but to truly optimize things and maximize development, you're probably gonna want some extensions. It's also worth noting that it can become complicated to track volume because, okay, a close grip bench press counts as one full set, an extension counts as one full set for triceps. What about a normal grip bench press? Is that half a set? Is it a third of a set? What about a super wide? bench press. Is that a sixth of a set? It becomes a little bit convoluted. Now, in terms of programming, I would put this after your main compound movements for sure. I think there's something to be said in some circumstances for pre-exhausting your chest before bench or something like that, but pre-exhausting your triceps before presses or before bench presses or before dips or something like that, I don't think there's a lot of value to be had there. You really do want to be chasing strength even for these isolation movements. For example, back in May, I started doing the standing overhead cable extension, and I could do 25 kilos for a set of six. And I progressed steadily, every doing it you know, every three to seven days or so. And my last workout was 50 kilos for six. So I literally doubled my strength on that movement. For the traditional standing away variation, I went from 50 kilos for eight to 65 kilos for five. So not as big of a jump because I had been doing that movement before, but still a pretty significant increase. And I think too many people just go through the motions when it comes to their isolation, you know, trying to focus on the contraction, the squeeze. You absolutely do want to be getting stronger. That has to be the main focus. (sighs) Yes, mind-muscle connection is good and all, but you do have to get stronger. Now, in terms of strength standards, I would say a 300 pound dip, total weight, not just the weight added, is gonna be a good standard. Alpha Destiny recently did a video where a 300 pound pull up total was his standard for lats. So I would say a 300 pound dip or maybe even the 350 pound dip is a good target. And if you can pop that off for six or eight or 10 or 12 reps, full range of motion controlled, you will have some dank ass triceps. For the close grip bench press, I would say targeting anywhere from 100 to 120 kilos for multiple reps is going to be a good target. It's roughly 220 to 275-ish pounds. will pretty much ensure that you have big triceps. Now, close grip is going to be, 
I would say right around here to where you're touching just outside the chest is going to be a good way to go. If you're too close, be prepared for some wrist issues. And if you're too far, it's no longer a close grip bench press. And when it comes to extensions, especially overhead, if you can work up to, you know, 60 kilos for reps, so 135 pounds or so, you're going to have some long head in your future. Now, in terms of tracking progress, you can track your progress just visually. If your arms look bigger, they're probably bigger. But I would say taking measurements is a good idea. You can just use a tape measure. It's fairly easy once you get used to it. It can take a little bit of practice, especially if you're doing it alone. But once you know how to do it, you know, it takes 10 seconds. And the triceps are roughly two-thirds of the upper arm. So the arm measurement is a pretty good measure of progress. I would say if you're, you know, 14, 15 inches, you know, it's good, solid, but it could be better, probably. 16 inches is getting pretty decent. 17 is quite impressive. 18 is freaking awesome, assuming you're lean and a natural. And 19, well, I highly doubt anyone is natural and lean and watching this video who has a 19-inch arm, but I suppose it's possible. And 20 inches, send evidence. Definitely grab a copy of my book if you enjoyed this video. A lot of my video ideas are just things from my book in less detail. So definitely if you enjoyed this video, if you want to know more about getting big ass triceps, grab a copy of my book. It is actually priced like a normal book. It's not hundreds of dollars like some influencers are charging. It is priced very reasonably and has a ton of useful and practical information. I appreciate the support. All right, like, share, subscribe, slap around that notification bell, all the good stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.